All right. Well, um, welcome everybody. Um, I am, of course, just ecstatic to be here. Of course, this is a conversation about one of the most interesting topics in the world, one of our most favorite topics, taxes, the U.S. tax code. I know it's riveting. It's it's everyone's favorite. Um, and we're going to talk about it today. Um, but seriously, uh, welcome, everyone. Um, thanks so much for coming to um, a collective webinar. And as you can see, you know, collective is the modern back office for solopreneurs. Uh, you know, we'll kind of, you can kind of think of us as kind of like, a, you know, all in one solution for a, a small business person. But today, of course, we have one of our famous webinars. And, you know, we're going to go, we're going to go through, through some things about S Corps, about how they work, um, about how you should run your taxes um, and pay your taxes. Um, and just kind of up some other best practices um, for that as well. Um, but while I wait for, you know, people to trickle in here, let me get some, you know, just some housekeeping um, topics out of the way. And for one, we've got two different boxes here. We've got a chat box and we've got a Q&A box. So in the Q&A, at, at the end, excuse me, at the end of this webinar, we're going to have a Q&A session. Um, to where you can ask me, you know, any question you'd like to, and I'll do my best to answer it. Um, so for those type of like, you know, tax questions or just sort of collective questions, put those in the Q&A box, please. And then for any sort of logistical questions like sound or audio or any, you know, sort of issues like that, put that in the chat box if you don't mind. Um, so we'd appreciate it if you do that. And then um, please, you know, join our webinar group, um, our webinar updates group on LinkedIn. Um, that's a thing. Um, it, we have these quite often. And if you join that group, you know, just find us on LinkedIn. Um, and if you join that group, you'll be able to get some updates on when we do these uh, webinars in the future. And then please, if you don't mind, like, you know, take a picture of your webinar um, happening, you know, give us a shout out on, on social media and, you know, encourage other people to, you know, you know, maybe look into an S Corp and see if it, it might be right for them. Um, and then also to this replay, like this recording will be sent out um, within 24 hours uh, via email. Now, like we're not able to send out the slide, a copy of the slide deck, unfortunately, but we can send out this recording. So, you know, you can, you can expect that. And then for any sort of like webinar related, like inquiry, um, email webinars at collective.com. And uh, we'd be happy to uh, assist you and, you know, answer any questions you may have. But now that I've got that out of the way, um, how about uh, if you guys don't mind, you know, put, uh, let, let's see, put where you're from and um, where you're from. And um, if, if you really want to go the extra mile, put where you're from and what kind of business you do, like what sort of industry are you in, um, like what, what kind of business do you have? And put that in the chat box for us um, while we kind of get started here. Um, and I, I'm just kind of, I'm curious um, to know that um, while I'm waiting. Santa Cruz, California and an architect. Okay. All right. Animation. That's one of my favorite parts about working for Collective and, and speaking to uh, small business owners is the variety of just industry and you know variety of skills is just so diverse you know like one day i might be speaking to an animator um and the next day i might be speaking to um you know a web designer like it's um it's just uh, it blows my mind all the all the businesses that i get to speak to um okay miami all right yeah well i actually live i'm in sarasota florida so i'm not too uh, far away from you We've got some filmmakers. Okay, Christina's from Florida and she does um, anesthesia. I'm from Florida too. All right, we have got a good group. All right, well, I think, I think we can go ahead and get started. So I already spoke about collective, but let's go ahead and go. Let, let's go ahead and talk about what we have on the agenda today. So, We'll talk about, you know, LLC or S Corp, you know, when to, when to make the switch, you know, which one is best for you. Um, we'll talk about how to estimate your taxes. You know, if you're self-employed, that's important. 
um, because you're not going to, when you're employed, you know, you've got your taxes taken out of your check. It's not usually not a big deal to run your taxes, but when you're self-employed, you got to pay them yourself and you got to, you know, handle the organization of them yourself. So that becomes important. And then, of course, um, what everyone likes to hear, um, how an S-Corp can lower your estimated taxes. Um, that's the whole point of an S-Corp is to, you know, um, pay less in the self-employment tax. So that's um, that's obviously a, an adv you know financially advantageous thing right there. And then who can backdate an S-Corp? You know, is that how is that even possible? You know, what's the process for that? Um, how and when to backdate an S-Corp? And then also, too, something interesting, how backed in an S-Corp can lower taxes you've already paid, maybe, you know, for this first quarter or taxes you've already paid, you know, into the government. Um, also, collective, um, uh, you know, we're hosting the webinar today, but essentially you can think of collective, like I mentioned earlier, we're an all-in-one financial platform, you know, designed for people that own businesses or, you know, who are freelancers or have, you know, a consulting practice. Um, Collective has a, a really diverse um, sort of, you know, range of members. Um, and we're here to make all of this easy for you. So here's your money when you're self-employed. Like when, when you're self-employed, unfortunately, your situation, your financial situation and just personal situation is just more complex than it is when you're employed, when you're a W-2 employee working for somebody else. Um, you know, you have to, you have to, you know, think about, you know, how do I properly structure, like set up and structure my business? How do I even pay my estimated taxes? How do I calculate those and know how to pay them? Um, if I'm an S corp, how do I handle payroll? Um, there's just so many things you got to juggle when you're self-employed. When you need to make a decision, what like a financial decision, unfortunately, multiple sort of categories of these, you know, sort of different elements about being self-employed could affect, you know, financial sort of consequences and, 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 um, could, um, when you need to make a financial decision, you have to think about several of these. It can be complicated, but, you know, at collective, you know, I, I think, you know, the convenience and benefit of us is that it's all in one spot. Uh, when you're an S corp, you know, we'll pretty much handle the, the whole situation. From the bookkeeping, the payroll, um, down from the tax filings, um, we do the the whole thing. Okay, what are you struggling with most right now? I, I may be wrong, um, and I've actually um, Sarah here. She is a a great. She's a colleague of mine here at Collective, and she's helping me out with the webinar. Yes, I believe this is a poll question, so you should just had a you should have just had a poll pop up. And what are you struggling struggling with most right now? Um, and you can see them there. I'm not going to read them. Um, but which one of those um, really about your finances is the most uh, most challenging to you right now? And while you do that, I'm going to continue getting caffeinated, if everybody doesn't mind. It's one o'clock here in Florida, but hey, it's uh, never too late for coffee as far as I'm concerned. All right, we'll give it a few more moments and then we'll get going. I'm anxious to see. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, here's a new one. Okay, I, I don't usually I don't think it's this one, but it's um by far the biggest. I'm setting up your LLC or S Corp. Okay, well, um, you're at the right place, and uh, you know we'll. That's what we do. So you know, no longer you no longer have to worry about that. Okay, let's get into just some tax basics, and you know, specifically federal tax basics. If you're self-employed, first, most of you here, probably all of you, um, but no, no, most of you is the correct verbiage. There are pass-through structures. So essentially, it's 
it's things that you know doesn't pay any income tax to the um, federal government to the IRS. They they just kind of all the income sort of passes through their business to yourself, and it's it's reported on your personal tax return eventually. So all of these are passed through through structures. Sole proprietorships, which you know essentially means you don't have any sort of structure set up. You know, you're just doing business on your social security number. You don't have an LLC or a corporation set up. Um, so that's a sole prop. And then partnerships, which is, you know, essentially a multi-member LLC. It's when two or more people are on an, you know, on an LLC. That's what a partnership is. And then you have LLCs, which, you know, specifically here, single member LLCs. That's what I mean, because multi-member LLCs are just partnerships. That's what we call partnerships. Um, and then you have S-Corps. And S Corp is actually, and what's weird about S Corp is that they could be any of these. They well, well, not any of these. They they can't be a sole proprietorship, but an, a partnership can make an S Corp election. An LLC can make an S Corp election. Um, all those things, both of those things rather, can make can become an S Corp. All right, let's go through some taxes you guys pay. First of all, we have income taxes. So it's, you know, it's kind of the standard, you know, I guess, category of taxes that you think of when you think of um, taxes. Um, it, it's based on brackets. So um, you're paying between zero and 37%. And how it works is when I say brackets, it means that chunks of your money are taxed at different rates. Um, so that's what I mean about brackets. It's, it's not a flat rate. And the self-employment tax is a flat rate. So that is, uh, it, it's a flat rate of 15.3%. And literally what it is, it's Social Security and Medicare taxes. That's what the self-employment tax is, you know. And uh, the, the biggest chunk of the tax rate is Social Security. And the other chunk goes to Medicare, um, you can see. Um, and then when you're and really the self-employment tax, there's a lot, there's a lot more people that pay the self-employment tax in effect than you think. Like even when you're an employee, you still pay this this tax because you pay the Social Security Medicare tax. You know, it's even the same tax rate. Like it's it's 15.3%, but the only difference is, you know, half of it is paid by the employer. You know, whoever employs you pays half of that uh, of that Social Security Medicare tax for you. So um, it's a little bit cheaper when you're employed, but when you're self-employed, you pay both halves. You pay the full um, 15.3%. Yeah. Um, and well, that's why I just hear just kind of more information about that. Like when you're self-employed, this is why it's so expensive. So this right here, um, so $15,000 is owed is, this is an example of someone who makes $100,000 net income. When you're an employee and you make $100,000 net income, you're only paying half of the Social Security Medicare tax. So you're paying $7,500. bucks. When you are self-employed, that doubles to fifteen dollars um, because you pay the full 15.3%. So it's, you know, it's not a very, uh, it's, it's a painful situation. That's for sure. So uh, keep that in mind when you're self-employed. Okay. So this is how it works generally with um, the finances and your tax returns. So when you're self-employed, you have your total revenue, which essentially just kind of, which means your gross income is what that is. And then you have your tax deductions, which are your business expenses and things of that nature. And then you got your net income, whatever that is. And that net income can either be a profit or it can be a loss. So essentially that means it can be negative or it can be, po it can be uh, positive or it can be negative. And whatever it is, is it passes over to your owner's tax return, you know, to your um, personal return. And, you know, all of the business profits are subject to the self-employment tax, and then the rest are subject to income tax. All right, let's talk estimated taxes. All right, if you... If you think that you could owe a thousand dollars or more in tax just per year, then you should pay estimated taxes. And generally, that's people who you know, independent contractors. Um, like if you're just a you know a freelancer, or you're just working ten ninety nine for some people. 
generally you should pay you should probably be paying estimated taxes people that have their own businesses and make substantial money from self employment income they need to pay estimated taxes if you fight if you are a sole proprietorship like even if you don't have an llc set up or anything like that um if you have your if you're self employed then you should probably be paying them and people that have shares or people that own llc's they're usually subject to to estimated taxes too so taxes really the irs like people think that taxes um are paid at the um at the end of the year but it's not the case taxes are supposed to be paid throughout the year so when as you make money that's when you're supposed to pay taxes so as you make money when you're a w2 employee of course you know your taxes are taken out of your paycheck already or they should be you know most of them and you might even get a refund at the end of the year cuz you know you paid a little bit more in tax from your um paycheck uh deductions than you did than you needed to so you so you're getting a refund but when you're self employed you're supposed to you know pay those pay in those estimated taxes manually either online or you know through um a check mailed and um you're supposed to make payments if you expect to owe a grand or more and if you do not make enough um payments through withholding or estimated tax you could you can uh, be penalized you can be charged a penalty um you you can even be charged a penalty if your tax payments are late like even if you're due a refund even if you pay enough taxes that it covers it but the estimated taxes aren't correct or they're late you could still be charged a penalty um and es estimated taxes are due on a quarterly basis and they're they're due halfway through the month after the quarter in question so for example for january february and march that first estimated tax payment is due on april 15th and so on and so forth and the last one of course is due on january january 15th because that covers um uh what is that uh october november and december so um Keep that in mind. Okay. Here is, this is called the safe harbor rules. Um, so you pay the lesser of this. When, when, like when, you, when you're thinking about estimated taxes, if, if you think, if you can pay 90% of the current year's taxes, um, you know, just kind of on time and like per quarter, then you um, won't get penalized, you know, typically. Or also, if you can pay 100% of last year's taxes, like whatever you owed last year, if you pay your estimated taxes on time, you won't get penalized. All right. Um, and then essentially, like how you estimate your tax is you just, you come up with your AGI, you, um, you know, essentially you calculate your income, and then you just um, multiply it by your uh, by your tax rate. So um, you know, take your AGI, go on a on an online calculator that estimates you know income tax, and just you know calculate your AGI by that. And then um, whatever your payment is for the year, you just divide that by four, and that's how much you should be paying um, per quarter to the IRS. What is an S corp? That's why we're here to discuss, right? All right, before we kind of go into the S Corp, let's talk about legal structures. So a legal structure, oh, whoops, whoa, what happened? Let's get back there. So a legal structure is, it's actually, it's formed with the state. It's um, it's either typically it's LLCs or it's corps. Um, th there's some other ones too, but generally th those are the two main entities. And, you know, they're usually required to file an annual report, you know, letting the st state know what's going on and who manages the entity. Um, and all of that, you know, formation and sort of information returns are done with the Secretary of State's office of your, usually of your state of residence. An S-Corp is a tax election. It's not a, um, it's not a business entity by itself. Like it's a, it's a way for a business entity to get taxed. So uh, you've got to be an LLC or a corporation before you can even make an S corp election. Um, and if, like, you know, the IRS automatically, the IRS decides how each business structure is taxed if you don't ask if you don't ask them to be taxed a different way. So, for example, if you're an LLC, 
you're treated as a disregarded entity with the IRS. So essentially what that means is if, if you set up an LLC, you're taxed the same way as a sole proprietorship. You know, a big chunk of your income um, can be subject to the self-employment tax and uh, you're a sole prop uh, tax, for tax purposes. Um, but if you have an LLC, you can ask the IRS to tax you under the S Corp tax rules, which has a possibility to save you money on the self-employment tax. All right. So here's how taxes work when you're an S Corp. Usually, usually a huge chunk of your earnings were subject on um, either all of your net income or a big chunk of your net income before you become an S Corp. But when you're when you're an S Corp, you don't pay self-employment tax on business profits. What it does essentially is an S Corp, it kind of creates like a an employee-employer relationship. Between you and your own LLC, like between you and your own business. And um, you're still, of course, you're still the owner, of course. Like you're still listed as the owner on your company formation documents and whatnot. Um, but for tax purposes, you literally become an employee. And since you're an employee, your business will pay you a salary. It'll pay you a wage, you know, just like you'd receive if you, you know, work for someone else as a, a W-2 employee. Um, but the sort of advantageous thing about S corps is that um, as long as you, um, what's cool about S corps is whatever your salary is, like whatever you choose to pay yourself in salary, that is now the only chunk of your money that's subject to the self employment tax. Um, so let's keep going. When you're a sole proprietorship, you know th we've already kind of gone through this, but. Your net, you have your net income, which is your gross income minus your expenses, and it's subject to the self-employment tax and the income tax. S corps work a little differently. With an S corp, you have your S corp revenue, like you. So you have your total revenue, your gross income, essentially your S corp revenue, and then from there you pay yourself a salary from that revenue. And then, of course, you have business expenses like software expenses, travel expenses, you know, client, like, you know, whatever you have, the home office deduction, um, you've got some business expenses. So then, you know, after paying, after the S Corp itself pays your salary and your expenses, you either have a profit or a loss. And that profit or a loss um, goes over to the S Corp tax return. Then the, the, um, the profit is still subject to the income tax. Um, the distributions, the profit of the loss typically isn't subject to the self-employment tax, but it's still subject to the income tax. So for example, here's how it works. If you're a sole proprietorship, you know, let's just assume you're making 160 grand. If you're a sole prop, you know, that full 160 grand is subject to the self-employment tax, the 15.3%. So, you know, that, that's a good 24,000. Um, that you're paying just in the self-employment tax. Um, but with an S-Corp, what you do is you pay yourself a salary. And for whatever reason, um, this person believes that a $60,000 salary is a reasonable salary for them. So it's only the $60,000 that's subject to the self-employment tax. The pass-through profit, you know, th these are your distributions. And um, that money is no longer subject to the tax. So, you know, your total tax savings in that situation is over 15,000. Um, so not bad at all, of course. Getting a salary through my S Corp is great, but how much do I pay myself? That's a very good question. Um, Cause you know, when you make an S Corp election you're required to pay yourself a salary, but how do you even go about that? So what's, the only, really the only thing the IRS says about the salary is that it has to be reasonable. It has to, you have to compensate your, yourself reasonably. There's no, you know, objective sort of set standard for it. Um, it it's essentially, it's a facts and circumstance test. So um, it's just, uh, you know, like where you live in the country, how many hours a week you work in your business, how many years of experience you have, you know, what two other similar professionals, what do they make? You know, all um, how much do your business make in total? Like all of those things could potentially, you know, um, go into a a salary recommendation. 
Um, but you know, your salary is a tax strategy because you know the the less you pay yourself in salary, the more theoretically that you pay yourself in the self-employment tax. Um, but you can't pay yourself so low to where the IRS would have a problem with it. Because remember, like you know, you're, you're required to uh, keep it a reasonable salary, so that's important. Is an S corp right for you? Let's talk about that. So, sole props or LLCs alone, they're usually best, you know, for people generally that are making um, quite a bit less than sixty thousand dollars in a tax year. That's when you kind of want to generally, not always, but generally, you want to hold off in becoming an S corp. If you're below that sixty thousand dollar mark, if you're a little, if you're close to the sixty grand, then it still might be worth it to have a conversation and check it out. But our, the sweet spot is that sixty grand mark. Um, but you know, for S corps, for people that earn more than sixty thousand dollars in net income a year, um, and want to maximize retirements, and um, when you know is in that situation, then an S corp could be right for you. How do you get started with an S corp? That's important. You got to set it up, of course. That's the first thing with just about anything you got to do. Um, the first thing you do with an S corp, most people need to create an LLC. File your articles of, articles of organization with your Secretary of State's office, um, and then file uh, any other sort of state required paperwork, um, you know, whatever that is. And then usually you need some sort of operating agreement which is kind of like the, you know, the legal backbones of your LLC. Um, and then, of course, you um, need an S selection. Um, and you get an EIN number with the IRS in order to make an S selection. You file the S selection, of course, with the, with the IRS. It's paperwork with the feds. And then you register for a payroll account, set up the tools in order to pay payroll, um, for bookkeeping, the payroll software, um, set up your money flows. Uh, you you got to have your business bank account, a business credit card. Um, so there's quite a bit of stuff that it, that it, that happens when you set up an escort. You also, of course, have have to um, maintain it in an ongoing nature. You, you've got to um, keep it going. You got to keep it operating. And you when when you make an escort collection. You'll need to file now. You'll have two tax returns. You'll have business returns, and then you'll have personal returns as well, both. You'll have payroll returns. Um, I, I believe that those are quarterly. And then you'll need to maintain your entity. You know, keep your state paperwork file filed to keep your LLC up and running. Um, you'll need to pay the LLC, the annual fees with your LLC. Um, and then, of course, keep up with your bookkeeping. And your tax obligations. Maintain your books monthly. Um, that's best practice. And then, of course, pay your estimated taxes, you know, both to federal and sometimes the state. Sometimes, you know, you have state income taxes. He'll, here is the million dollar question. Who can backdate an S-Corp? All right. Well, if you're already an LLC, we can actually backdate your S corp to January first of this year. If you've had an exist, if you had an, if you have had an LLC in existence uh, coming into this year, then we can backdate your S corp election. So all of the money that you've made since January first can be roped under the S corp tax rules, and you can potentially save on the self employment tax. So here's how it works: you, you got to file the backdated S corp election. And then also too, the deadline for this was March fifteenth. That's the that was the technical deadline for making an S corp election. So if you're late, you know we, we've got to present a reasonable cause argument as to why you're late to the IRS. Um, of course, we got to get an EIN, register for a payroll account, do all that good stuff. You know we'll do a bookkeeping cleanup that's included um, with a back, backdated S corp election. Um, We'll reconcile your expenses, do all that, um, include missing business expenses. Uh, we'll create your balance sheet. Like all of this stuff is required when you backdate an S form collection. So it can be pretty complicated. Backdating an S corp can lower taxes you've already paid. 
So, you know, what's happened is um, you've already, let, let's say that you've already made an estimated tax payment or anything. Um, you pay, and you're currently an LLC. You pay more self-employment taxes when you're an LLC, you know, usually. So if you're paying current estimated taxes, you might be paying more taxes than you would if you were an S-Corp. So if we're back to in your S-Corp, theoretically, we should be able to save you, you know, some more money than you've already paid. Um you know, it'll lower your tax bills. And then if you've throughout the year, if you've received, if you've paid too much in taxes, you'll get a refund. Okay. When should you back at an S Corp? It's always a good question. Now. So you can see it. Um, March 31st is the deadline. You know, to join collective and and still have the uh, still have it backdated to to January first of this year, um, just because when you backdate an S corp election, like there's just a lot of work with you know cleaning up the books and doing it like that. So we just need to do it, you know, pretty soon in the year. Um, so keep that in mind. And are you thinking about switching to an S corp? I I could be wrong, but I believe that this is a poll question, Sarah. Um, so if you don't mind starting this poll. All right. Are you thinking about switching to an S-Corp? We are interested. Um, you know, because some people, they've heard about them and they're not really sure what they are, how they work, and some people are on board. Um, but we're, we're just kind of, uh, we're interested in which one you are. All right, let's go ahead and shut it down and get going. Okay. Oh, still not sure. Most of you are still not sure. Well, that's okay. Um, hopefully, you know, this webinar can uh, take care of that. So hopefully by the end of the webinar, we'll change that. Um, but let's keep going. First of all, what it's like on your own without collective. You know, this is what it's like running an escort. First of all, you've got to set it up which can be complicated. You know, got, got to get your EIN number, uh, register your payroll accounts, you know, file the S Corp election uh, paperwork necessary um, or, or properly. Um, you have to calculate your reasonable compensation. Uh, you've got to, uh, you know, do ongoing state compliance with the payroll. It can be kind of a nightmare if you do it on your own. But with Collective, we handle all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, so we'll... Um, take care of your uh, payroll. We used Gusto's technology to run your payroll. That's included in the membership. Um, we will take care of your bookkeeping monthly, um, make sure that you, uh, you know, remain organized. And then of course, um, we'll file your S-Corp tax return, uh, set up the S-Corp before, we, we do all that stuff. And then of course, this is of course just so exciting. We're available nationwide. So, you know, regardless of where you are, Collective will be able to take care of And this is who we work with currently. We work with sole proprietorships. Like, you know, if you don't have a LLC or anything like that set up, we work with single member LLCs. Um, you know, if you have already have an LLC and, you know, it's a single member, then we can work with you. But we also work with um, spouses, spousal LLCs that are in community property states. So um, that's, that's um, we work with them too. And if you think that might be you, you still might want to schedule a call with us and discuss it. Um, but we also, we support LLCs already filing as an S-Corp. So uh, we work with them as well. And then the sweet spot for us is around $60,000 in self-employment net income and in, in net profit. Um, so keep this in mind, please. And then this is kind of, uh, this is what you can expect at your first year at Collective. Um, we'll set up the S-Corp, you know, we'll file your LLC, make your S-Corp election, um, and, uh, you know, handle all of that. 
um, handle up, uh, handle the bookkeeping and payroll setup. Um, and then of course, just ongoing back office support, uh, like monthly bookkeeping. We'll give you your reports every month. Um, we'll give you a, a profit and loss statement, a cash flow statement and a balance sheet every month for your books. And then of course, um, we'll, um, provide reasonable compensation adjustments, um, reminders to file your LLC state paperwork. And then of course, a personal financial team that you can message, you know, for um, questions or advice or for anything like that. And then of course we have taxes. Um, and at the end of the year, we'll file your S corp tax return because you know, you'll have, you'll have a business return now that comes into existence and um, we'll file your, your, or we'll calculate your um, estimated tax calculations. All right, here's how much we cost. You've kind of got, you've got two ways to pay. If you go the month to month route, it's $349 a month if you do the monthly option. If you do it in full, if you pay in full for the year, Collective gives you 15% off. So it comes out, you know, that price right there, $3,559. Um, so, you know, you save a good chunk if you do the annual version, but also when you first come on board, there's usually also a one-time 199 onboarding fee, you know, to, you know, to clean up certain people's books, to get the LLC set up, to, um, just handle that. And then, um, of course, this is all inclusive in the sense that it includes your bookkeeping and payroll tools that you can also use yourself. Um, and of course, collective is a tax deductible business expense. All right, so Collective is actually running a pretty advantageous uh, promo here for tax season. And essentially, um, schedule a call with us. Um, and what you do is if you sign up by March 31st, if you you know kind of get it done by then, you'll have you'll get your first month free and you you won't have an onboarding fee. So both of those will both of those will be waived. So if you already have an LLC set up, then you know you can join Collective for essentially zero dollars down. That's how it works. Um, so please, you know, schedule a call, and we'll go through the, your situation, see if Collective would be a good fit for you, um, and we'll go from there. And then, of course, here's the discount code. Um, you know, Spring Savings. Uh, if if you bring that with you to your call, then it'll zero out. You know, your first month, um, and we'd love to have a conversation with you. And now this is our Q&A session. So if you'd please go, if you have any questions, go to the Q&A box and type them in there. And I will be happy to start getting those answered. Okay. What if you're not, what if you're not certain if you'll be filing as an LLC or an S Corp? Can you backdate? You can only backdate an an S an, an S corp if you have an LLC in place. So, um, like for example, if you have an LLC like coming into this year, like if it was created before 2024, um, as long as you join Collective um, at some at some point, we can backdate it to January 1st of this year, actually. Um, and and the deadline for that, as you saw earlier, was is March 31st. So as long as you have an LLC in place, we can do that. As a tax affair, I have a client that set up their corporation last year through LegalZoom. Somewhere the ball got dropped filing the two the S corp uh, the S corp election. The extension was rejected as an S corp. Is it okay to attach the two five five three to the initial return mailed in? Of course. Um, to be honest with you, I don't really know. Um, that that's a kind of a technical technical tax question. I would ask a CPA, somebody, uh, something like that. What happens to estimated tax paid as a sole proprietor or an S-corp in a, in a divorce situation in a community property state? Yeah, that's definitely, that's a question for an attorney. Like that, that's getting into more into uh, like marital law and stuff. I, I, I can't, I'm, I'm not qualified to answer that, unfortunately. The state of California doesn't allow architects for LLCs, but does allow us to be general stock corporations. Does collective still work for me? Unfortunately not, Michael, you know, right now we can't work with corporations, um, but I do think one day that will change. 
So, you know, just kind of, you know, give us a follow on social media. And um, if we ever, you know, open up to corporations, we'll definitely um, announce that. Amber asked, just to confirm, S-Corps are best for people who make more than $60,000 after deductions. So net profit, not gross. That's exactly correct. So it, 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 they're, mo they're most advantageous for people that are making at least $60,000 net, net profit or above. What is considered reasonable cause for being late? I, like most, I think reasonable cause, um, I, I could be wrong here. I don't, I don't really have the data on it, but I think most reasonable cause reasons are, you know, I, I simply just wasn't aware, like I'm not a tax professional. I wasn't aware of the deadline. So um, I think, I believe that that could be a reason. If you have an EIN, do you have to get a new one if you change to S Corp? Not if you have an EIN on a current LLC. Like if we're not setting up a new LLC, um, like if you have an EIN with your sole proprietorship, because you can do that, you can be a sole prop without an LLC and set up an EIN. So if you have that, then... Um, and we set up a, a new LLC, we'll have to get you a new EIN. So that's the only situation. But if you've got an LLC with an existing EIN number, we shouldn't have to change that. But if you're new in the business, I believe we had about 70 days from the time you set up the LLC to get the election in. Um, yes, like if you, you're, I, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe when you set up your LLC, you actually have 75 days it's either 70 or 75 days to um, elect the escort tax status like after you set up your you after you form your entity what if we already what if we are already an escort but didn't finish setting it up for many different reasons no bank account no payroll and now we're looking for guidance can collective still help Yes, absolutely. Let, let's uh, you know schedule a call with us, and and we'll see what we can do for you. Can I hire foreign contractors in an S corp? Yes, you can. What if we haven't yet profited profited sixty thousand, but we attend to this year for the first time? Should we file for an S corp election later this year or for next year? Well, if you if you if you think that you'll your net income will be sixty thousand dollars for this year, like there's really not a reason to wait. Like you know, if you're pretty sure, um, then you can you know go ahead and get it started and get it organized. Does the S corp EIN have to be different than the LLC? No, the um, EIN number for your LLC will be the same thing. Will you make an e when you make an S corp election on that LLC? I'm an accountant. I just need help with a few pieces of your services. Well, collective is kind of a, you know, all in one nature. So we don't just file up tax returns here or there. You know, we handle the whole shebang of, you know, bookkeeping, payroll, and tax filings. What if your existing LLC is a member of an LLP? Yes, I do not believe we'd be able to support that structure, unfortunately. Well, we are only able to support, you know, standalone single member LLCs. What if I started a business in April 2023 and erroneously selected corporation? Well, if you're a corporation, unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to work with you. Um, but it, I believe that you it's possible to convert, you know, to an LLC. So if you if you did that, we'd uh, you know be able to service you. What is the significance of the sixty thousand cutoff for those who have an LLC? And what tax advice do you have for those making less than sixty thousand? Well, the reason for the sixty thousand dollar number is usually when someone makes um, an S corp election, they're generally saving around fifty five hundred dollars. And this is very general; it could be more, it could be less. But people, I, I've I've seen people are generally saving around fifty five hundred dollars a year in the self employment tax. Um, you know, so that right there, you know, especially if you go the annual route. That's a good, you know, two grand above collective's fee, or, you know, or close to. Um, so it's just kind of a good rule of thumb to where it's financially worth it. And then, you know, if you're for those of you who are, you know, making less than sixty k, you know, most of the time it's probably just a good idea to remain as an LLC or a sole prop. 
um, just because it's more simple. All right. How long does it take for the election to be approved? Um, well, that depends. Um, unfortunately, like, you know, with so many other things with uh, taxes, it, it depends. Um, so if it takes a long time for the, um, for the IRS sometimes to approve the S corp election. So, you know, it, it could literally take months before you got, um, before you got an answer back. Okay. Still confused about the QBI. How does that work? Um, essentially the QBI allows you to just to deduct, you know, just a certain portion of your income. It was a result of the, um, Trump, or the you know the two I, I want to say it was the 2017 tax law. Okay. Preferred filing an election when employing teenage children for the family business. We are currently under sixty thousand in net profit. Well, general and this is very general stuff. You know, like everyone keep in mind that but you know don't don't consider this official tax advice. You know, before you do anything official. You know, speak to a CPA, speak to a tax professional before you do anything. Um, but just generally, you know, if you're below sixty thousand dollars in net profit, it's you know generally um, probably a good idea to wait on an S corp election. When you say filed the tax returns, is that done by CPAs? That's either done by CPAs or EAs, enrolled agents. After paying myself a reasonable salary, what happens to the rest of my business money? Can I access it for personal reasons without paying taxes? So your distributions, because um, what you're talking about all your distributions, that's the rest of your money outside of your salary. And those distributions, they're no longer subject to the self-employment tax, but they're still subject to the income tax. Um, and, you know, you can't really avoid those. Like, you know, you, you got to pay those regardless if you take distributions or not. So they're still subject to the income tax. So if you have a holdings company to hold assets, should you place an S-Corp on it? Um, it's impossible for me to, to answer that question just because, like, there's too many variables. But just keep in mind, and this is very generally, it might not apply to your situation, but generally, if you if you're just you know kind of have just passive ass assets, you usually you know wouldn't want to make an S corp election, like say like a, a rental property or something like that, um, because that money you know isn't typically isn't subject to the self employment tax in the first place. Um, so probably not. But again, like with with everything, speak more closely with a tax professional to determine the right answer there. Since an S corp is only applicable with revenue more than sixty thousand, but what 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 happens if the next year is lower than sixty grand? Um, well, it's no big deal. Like let's say that you know if you make below sixty thousand dollars, like you're you're not going to tax jail or anything, but eventually you'll reach a point to where you don't make enough money. You where to where you reach an income level to where the amount that you save with an S corp is you know, breaking even with collective's fee eventually. So and eventually, if you keep going down the scale, eventually you'll pay more, you know, for us than you will save with an S-Corp. So, you know, it, it gets to a point where it's not worth it. Um, so keep that in mind. I set mine up two years ago. I'm not sure if I filed the S-Corp election. How do I check? Well, you can actually get on the phone with the IRS um, and call them, and uh, they should be able to tell you. Are you required to be an employee for your escort? If you're doing work in the business, usually you've got to put yourself on payroll. Can there be several different type of businesses under one escort? Well, it depends on what you mean. If like th there are there are situations where it's possible if you have an LLC to have you know like multiple DBAs or you know something under one LLC, and then that LLC can make an S-Corp election, so that that's possible. Do you support QuickBooks? 
actually we have our own proprietary software. So, you know, you wouldn't need a, a software like QuickBooks. It's all roped under collective. Why would someone choose an S Corp over a C Corp? Well, for one, um, you save in the self-employment tax with an S Corp. And with an S Corp election, you don't have double taxation. You still remain a, you know, sort of a pass-through taxation structure. But when you're a C Corp, you have double taxation. You're taxed at the business level, you're, you know, you're taxed at the corporate level, and you're taxed at the investor level. So um, you could potentially pay more in taxes as a C-Corp. Can you have an S-Corp that sits above multiple LLCs, um, different business types in each LLC under one main S-Corp? So what you're talking about is essentially like kind of like a, a holding company or a management company. And... I've never set one up, but I have heard of people doing them, and there are some tax professionals that talk about them, um, and th they could very well be be possible to where, you know, you have one LLC at the top, and then it owns, uh, you know, multiple other LLCs, and then you make an S-Corp election on that top LLC, um, but again, you know, th those can be very complex, so, you know, talks to a tax professional before you do anything like that. Just to confirm, this isn't necessary for rental income, correct? Um, in general, yeah, it's generally not necessary for rental income. What calendar year do you usually suggest for Form 2553? Well, that would just be, you know, just uh, I would elect it as soon as possible. How will I be notified if the election is approved? You, you should receive a letter, um, an S-Corp approval letter, letter in the mail. Lucy asks, do you think it would be more beneficial to just wait to file the S-Corp next year to know what, we're, what we really net? And if so, would we have until March 15th to change to S-Corp? So if you have a current LLC in place, then yes, you know, you, you like the general deadline is March 15th um, every year. Um, but, you know, it, yeah, it might be like if you if you want to just kind of wait this year just to make sure that you, you know, make enough to where it's worth it, you could totally do that. Um, so it's just kind of up to you. Oh, Stacey has a good question. What is a recommended amount of owner's draws? And how often should they be taken? Is there a cap or a minimum amount of time so they can be taken per year? So what you're talking about are the distributions. Like that's essentially what you, I think you mean when you say owner's draw. And there's not really a limit on distributions. So, you know, there's some people that do it, you know, monthly or biweekly. A distribution is simply just, a, you know, a manual transfer from your business bank account to your personal bank account. Um, but what's recommended, though, is to keep the distribution or the um, the uh, ratio between your salary and your distributions reasonable. So you can't pay yourself too low a salary. Like it needs to be a reasonable salary. So that's important to keep in mind too when you're thinking about distributions. Can you be an independent contractor for your business? I'm honestly not really sure why you would want to be. Can a C Corp be approved for larger loans than an S Corp? I honestly don't know about that. I'm, I'm not in the banking industry, but I've never really heard information one way or the other, to be honest with you. Okay, that's all the questions in the Q&A box, but let me just go through the chat box to make sure we don't have any questions. Let me see. All right. What What is a reasonable cause for um, backdating an LLC? Um, that's a good question. So you can um, essentially, like you can, I think mostly what I've seen is people may, they say they just weren't aware of the deadline. So you can use that as a, a reasonable cause argument. I'm a new business. Can you help me set up my legal entity with the state? Yes, we would help you set up your LLC. What if I elect to be taxed as an S Corp but did not do payroll? Well, it is important that you pay yourself a reasonable salary. So, you know, there might be a possibility that you could be audited or you could be okay. Like it just kind of depends. 
All right. Well, I think that's all the questions that I have. Um, and it was such a pleasure as always. Like I, uh, I love doing these webinars. And um, like we mentioned earlier, you know, please, um, if you'd like to, um, you know, like, as you can see here, schedule a call with us. Um, we'd love to have a conversation with you, you know, and see if an escort would be in your best interest. And, you know, this offer to essentially join collective for free, like, you know, get your onboarding fee waived and your first month, this ends on March 31st. So, um, you know, please scan it right here, go to our website, schedule a call, um, and we would be happy to talk to you. Um, but like I said, I enjoyed it and I wish everyone the best of luck with their businesses. And I hope to talk to you very soon.